welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy, your Yanni host. And I'm RJ. And we are super excited to be here today. Um, it is July 22nd, and this is episode 145, I think. I think it's 145. Maybe it's 146. I don't know. It'll tell you at the top of it. There you go. Um, all right, so let's get right in, in the barn stalls. What do we got going on in the barn stalls? We just have the holding pen, right? It's the watch it's pen. The watch pen. Um, so Hershey's already come out of the watch pen. Um, it's just a pen of animals that get bullied when they eat. Don't mess those up. Um, and so they have to be separated. Um, two are on feed just because they need extra feed. Um, baby girl got kind of down, and she's um, doing better. She's doing really better. Um, the goats are over there for easy catching so that I can milk them. Just stuff like that. Nothing major. Could buy you goes for a checkup on Tuesday, right? And Star might go to Kevin and work with Kevin a little bit. So we're super excited about that. Um, and then you and Precious are going to go to... No, it's not on their pencil. Um, you and Precious are going to go to a workshop with Hogan Equine, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, and what is this he known for? Wait, God. <laughs> what is Hogan Equine known for? Arguing with Mustangs. Okay, he is the head of the Mustang Foundation, and he won one of the Mustang challenges um, back in the Mustang Challenge Extreme Challenge. Anyway, you have 100 days to work with a Mustang, get him to do all this stuff, and he won one of that. He's been um, in New York on the Good Morning America or whatever. Anyway, he's really awesome with not just horses in general, but Mustangs. So RJ's going to go. He is not taking Star. He's going to take Precious because um, from what they were saying, the workshop that they're going to work on is going to teach him tricks to build the horse's confidence and um, build a relationship with that horse. So, um, any time that we can find a workshop that you might be able to pick up even one little tidbit at, correct? Mm -hmm. It's it's worth going to. And that's local. It's here in Nowata. So it's like 10 minutes from our house and the first time anything like this has ever been offered, correct? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're okay with that. All right, so what do we got next? Uh, mending fences. I even choked your mother out, so she might need to be mended. What else needs to be mended? I can stitch her back together with this. We get a needle. A what bit. else needs to be mended? Dad's car? Yep. Okay. We'll get to that here in a little bit in, in the farmhouse, huh? In the yarn farm. Mm. Um, I made a little girl a pair of... What do they call those sandals? Uh, You're getting very sleepy. Very Oh, you stop it! Are you saying the uh, You were trying to hypnotize everybody, right? Yeah. You want to say no. what I'm going to do? What? Bring me some tacos. I'm hungry. <laughs> You're always hungry. Um. I anyway, I made um her some barefoot sandals, and she loved them. Her mom was like, you should make these and go into business. Mm. <laughs> There's a thought. I need something else on my plate, right? Um. No, I made them as a gift. She is a college kid. She actually went to school with RJ when he was in elementary school, and she's interning at the um, community garden, and she is at the farmer's market every week. So she does wonderful, and I wanted to show her that we appreciate it. So we made her some barefoot sandals, which she loves. She's already been wearing them around. She wore them around the farmer's market the day I gave them to her. And I told her how to block them because I wanted them blocked to her foot, not to mine. So um, she was like, I'm going to do that. I told her, I said, when you paint your toenails, just get them wet, put them on, and then paint your toenails. And she goes, no, I might get nail polish on them. So, I don't know. I told her to block them. We'll see. Uh, all right. Anything else in the yarn farm? No. In the fields. Well, that's that's a bad one. Got bell and hay right now. Okay. We've got how many bells of hay in the barn so far? Almost. 400. Almost 500. 400 and something in that load you did. Yeah. So, 
almost 500, I think. Right at 500. And so we are less than halfway there. That's okay. You got this, right? Yep. All right. Um, in the garden, of course, we're doing our weekly updates. Um, I've lost a couple of zucchini plants. I don't know why. They just they were doing good. I think it's the storms, the heat, whatever. Um, so, anyway, all right. In the farmhouse. Mom made. No, that is on the porch of my stuff. Try again. In the farmhouse. What's the big major thing that happened in the farmhouse this week? We need a new car. Why do we need a new car? Because ours no longer runs. Well, I think it runs. I don't think it, it goes runs. Anywhere. It just doesn't go anywhere. At all. The axle is yeah, right? broke in two places. Okay. Now, tell them what happened. And, uh, and I know that this sounds stupid, but we're just super happy that it turned out the way it did. Um, I wrecked it. You wrecked it. Tell the story. Tell them what happened. Remember it. That's okay, the that's problem. the problem. RJ left. Um, we had been here. We were hauling hay, right? Yeah. I ran into Noah. Um, he ran into Noah. Yeah. Got gas. I was at the farmer's market. It was Wednesday stopped night. Stopped and saw you. He stopped and saw me. We talked. I gave him the debit card, and then he went and got some fuel for the truck, and he came or for the car, and he came back, dropped off the debit card because I had to get gas for my truck. Ran home. Um, he ran home, dropped off some stuff. He just was doing everything. I mean, he we already brought in all the hay. We just hadn't unloaded it. Um, so it really wasn't anything major. Um, as I'm partway through the, uh, farmer's market, it was like 5.30, quarter to six, and I get a call, and it's RJ on the other end of the line, and he goes, I am sorry, Mom, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, and I was like, what, what are you sorry for, and he goes, I hit someone, and I was like, what? Mm -hmm. And he said, I was driving. I don't know what happened. I hit someone. And he was talking really slow. And I kept talking to him. And I said, okay, tell me where you're at. Has the police been called? He says, this man is really mad. And so you could hear the guy getting really irate and all that stuff. He goes, the lady isn't too bad to deal with, but the man is really angry. And uh, anyway, I said, did you call the police? He goes, no, they don't want me to. And I said, no, honey, it's the law. I think you have to. You know, and I'm talking to him on the phone, and this other car comes by, and they ask if the law had been called. And what did you tell him? I don't know. But I haven't. That's what I told him. He says, I haven't. And he says, I, I don't think they want me to. And the lady said, it's the law. You have to. So he said, okay. And the other party ended up calling the highway patrol after throwing a big fit, huh? Yep. The lady that was with them ended up calling the highway patrol. Um, and as it turns out, what's the last thing you remember? A town about five miles back, six miles back. So um, the ambulance gets there, and I actually made it there before the highway patrol or the ambulance or the police. Now, reason being is, no, I don't speed like a speed demon. You're closer. I, number one, was closer to the accident. I could take back roads. Highway patrol had to be called, and this is in a rural area. They had to go from Bonita all the way over to Chelsea and around. So, um, yeah, the way they had to come, gosh, how many miles do you think it was? 50, 60. 50, 60 miles, yeah, probably. And I was just 30 minutes up the road, not even 30, because I was running at the house. What was I, from Noah? 20 miles. Maybe 20 miles out. So I got there fast. Um, no, I didn't speed or anything like that. Um, got there, got our insurance out. RJ was talking so slow, and his eyes were like glazed over. I was scared. And uh, I kept trying to get him to talk, and he, he just... What did you tell me why you didn't talk? Um, what did you tell Kevin? You I just, couldn't think. He just couldn't think. They asked him, what year is it? Now, you guys see RJ podcasting all the time, so you know he's quick to wit, mouthy, whatever. And they asked him, what year is it? And he, this is, honestly, 
2017. And I looked at the guy and, and he goes, is that a normal response? And I went, mm-mm. And uh, they asked him, who is the president? And he kind of slow smiles and he goes, Trump. And it was like, and the guy's like, why is he talking like that? I said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so the officer, the officer went, or no, the EMS mm -hmm. did this eye reaction test on him in the ambulance. To a point where he went and got what from the highway patrol? A breathalyzer. They thought RJ was drunk. So, um, he went and got the high, the breathalyzer from the highway patrol, made him do that. He passed it. He didn't have any alcohol or anything in his system. Like, it didn't register anything, did it? I don't think so. Nothing. And so, they got real concerned, said he needs to go to the hospital now. They said that he was um, symptomatic of a head injury. He was... Taken. Got the chicken. You do not. You got the camera. Ah. Uh, he was taken. Quit. Now that's just gonna make people mad when they're trying to watch. Um. He was taken by ambulance over to Bartlesville. Um. They even took a urinalysis, all of his blood work, did all kinds of blood count. But what happened when they went to try and get your urine? I couldn't go. At all. Like, they had already given him one bag of saline solution and he was starting to act better in the ambulance. Then, at the hospital, he drank like a big old cup of ice water. And they ended up having to hook him up to a second saline bag to get enough fluids in him for him to be able to urinate. And they said that was severely dehydrated, correct? Yep. They said the way that we work... Um, yes, we're used to the heat and all that stuff, but she said that with the kind of heat we're having, what did she tell you? You cannot drink enough water. She says you cannot physically intake enough water to compensate what you're losing out in 100 degree, 111 degree heat. We've been drinking, we switched to Gatorade, so um, he's now drinking Gatorade. We're speaking at, we're out. Yeah, I gotta go get some today, huh? Um, we have found that we only like certain kinds. He that likes, lime stuff's awful. <laughs> he wants to yell, don't ever buy a variety pack, because then you won't know if you like it or not. But, um, fruit punch, orange. I'm good. Fruit punch and orange is probably about the only ones, huh? Um, we haven't tried the, the, the grape. We haven't really tried the grape. I'm too chicken to try the other two. That's who I like. I'll go with that. <laughs> So, anyway, lime? we have switched to Gatorade. Um, I still have my herbal tea, and believe it or not, I'm the only one that hasn't really felt the heat. So, I'm pretty happy with it. I never felt it. Yeah, never felt it. So, all right, we spent all night in the hospital, right? Went all night. We got out about midnight. And what did we do? Went to IHOP. Went to IHOP. I was hungry. He was hungry, which is what told me he was ready to be back to normal. Um so we went to IHOP. We did. And the next way morning. Too much food. Now, while all of this is going on, the highway patrol called two tow truck drivers. The one that was supposed to take my car was just being stupid. He wanted money paid right then and there, and he was hauling it off, and, and I'd need to write him a $200 check. And I said, no, just leave it. We'll come back for it. Um, I ended up, when I called our insurance. It was I, way off the road. Yeah, it was way off the road in the ditch. Um, I had called her insurance from the accident scene, and she had told me that we need to wait till the highway patrol got there. <laughs> I said, well, I've already called them. They're on their way. It's fine. She said, okay. Um, she made a little report and then got the man in touch with me the next day. Um, we did all the hospital stuff, ate high hop. I didn't let him take the car. The highway patrol looked at me and goes, can you really get out? I said, I'll have it gone within. How many hours do I have? And he says, 24 to 48. And he says, it has to be gone. And I said, okay, I'll have it gone. I said, I have a trailer at home with a wench on it. I said, I'll get it out of here and get it gone. And uh, he said, all right. I mean, I didn't have anything. I had my stuff for the farmer's market. Sorry, guys, I don't carry $200 cash on me for the farmer's market. Just not that kind of a market, okay? Um, $16. I did. I left a little early, which is fine. I make a little bit each week. 
not enough. I mean, it's enough for gas money for dad to get to and from work. So, and I have fun. It gets me off the farm. I meet new people. There's a bunch of kids that comes down from a church and we did needle felting that day. RJ was actually there at the um, farmer's market while I was with them doing the needle felting, correct? We talked about the original hacky sacks, that kind of stuff. I mean, there's kids there and I do educational stuff. So, and I don't mind doing it. Anyway, so he was just being a jerk, wanted paid right then and there. I asked him if he could just take it seven miles up the road. He said, nope, it has to go to our thing and it's going to be hundreds of dollars. And I said, just leave it. And as RJ's leaving in the ambulance, you know, I'm telling him, just go on because I'll take care of it. Um, the highway patrol was really nice, correct? Yeah. Um, RJ did receive a ticket. And what did he tell you about that ticket? It was the cheapest money to give me. Mm -hmm. And what did he say that he has to find fault yep. for insurance purposes? So even though there was obviously something going on medically with RJ, it's still my fault. It's still his fault. Um, so anyway, we got all the tests back. Um, when they took him from the scene, they were saying head injury. And I had to go and get dad and take him over. By the time he got all the fluids in him and got to the CAT scan, what did the CAT scan show? Nothing. Nothing. I had put it's out a blank. thing. There's yeah. Nothing up there. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Uh, I had put a thing out on Facebook asking for um, a prayer request for RJ. And hundreds of people. My phone blew up. I got texts. I got messages. Um, we got Facebook messages. There was hundreds of people that like the status, letting us know that they were doing it. And um, then there was people who actually commented. And I'll bet you there was hundreds, hundreds of people praying for him. So, yep. And with what? Within, by the time you got the CAT scan, it was what, 10 o'clock? Yeah. And that happened at 6, and he left the scene at 6.30. Something like that. So, between 6.30 and... 10:30, say in four hours. Mm -hmm. God heard the prayer and took care of it. That's all I can say. I was scared. I was nervous. Um, not the first time I've seen him leave in the ambulance. And most of the time I've been with him, but I had to leave him to do his own thing mm -hmm. while I went and got Dad, who was irate that RJ had wrecked his car. Mm -hmm. On the upside, what did Dad finally tell you? He didn't like that one anyway, so he wanted one with an air conditioner. <laughs> he didn't like that car anyway. And Come about a day later. Uh, I didn't like that car anyway. It didn't have an air conditioner. I said, okay. So, um, he the said next morning. He said at least morning, that totaled it because he'd be real pissed if he had to get it back. <laughs> that was his thing. Um, it was just a little back. 1998 Nissan, guys. It was um, a little put around work car. 93,000 miles on it. Um, and things were starting to go wrong. The air conditioner probably needed charged. Um, just this, that, and the other. Um, but not anything major. Not a very good looking car. It was an awful purple. Purple people eater. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a Dodge Neon. Not one of my favorite cars either, but it was mechanically so sound. So this day trooper didn't even know what kind of car it was. Like, yeah. What kind of car is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's an old Dodge Neon. So anyway, the next morning I call the insurance or the insurance adjuster called us, and we explained what had happened. I put him on the phone to RJ so that he could take RJ's statement. And as it turns out, what's the good news in all of this? I have really good insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a little tidbit about evaluating your. Insurance. Don't just tell them I want everything. No. Here's the deal. When I bought my truck 15 years ago, I had to put part of the money on a bank note. I had a trade in and I had a little cash, but I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have enough. It was a truck and it costs, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. And I, I don't keep that on hand. We're, we're a small farm and that's just the way it was. I bought that truck back when you were what? Two, right? That's four, or five. Four or five. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a two thousand. My truck is a two thousand, right? Mm -hmm. And I got it. I got it one year old, with less than thirty six thousand miles on it. So I got it in two thousand and one. This is two thousand, but sixteen. So you were four. 
Um, so anyway, when I bought that truck, um, the bank told us what we had to have on it. Now, small town USA, our insurance man was right next door to our bank and they were related. So the banker guy, I said, you just tell Mark what I need and he'll make sure I have the right insurance. He says, okay. So he wrote this stuff down and he said, take this over to Mark. Mark put it on. I said, okay, that's fine. So apparently I have gap coverage, which the lady's like, ma'am, you don't need that on this truck because, or on this car because you don't have a bank note. She says, you only put that on if it's a bank note. So apparently I've been paying so that the insurance, please stop. So the insurance, can I finish? I've been paying so that the insurance will pay the difference between the payoff of the note and the value of the car because sometimes there's a difference. So I've been paying for gap insurance. Didn't even know that was a thing, okay? But when you get a truck or vehicle from the bank, stub it. Oh, he's back to his old self. Um, when you have that note with the bank, they insist on having it covered. So I have full coverage on a 17-year-old truck. How old was the car? 20 almost. 20-year-old car. So yeah, I have full coverage, collision, everything, totally loaded. And I actually switched my insurance to another company back in 2014, three years ago. And the thing is, is that, no, we can hear me a bit. The thing is, is that I didn't know, and when I did it online on at that company's website, I copied the numbers because they wanted like specific numbers and, and I didn't know what they meant. And my banker is a friend of ours, so I know he wouldn't do us wrong. So I copied the numbers he had given Mark all those years ago um, and just copied them over. And the only reason I moved is because our insurance company closed up shop in the little town we had it. Therefore, I had no, they wanted me to go to Jenks. They didn't know who I was. Um, if I'm going to just be a number, I'm going to be a number for something cheaper. Just saying. So, um, when I shopped it around, I used the same numbers and I put it in the same and got a cheaper rate. Well, lucky for me, I did because I have full coverage on two cars that and gap insurance that I don't need. But at least I'm insured, baby. <laughs> so the cars totaled. Um, we're going to receive a little bit of a settlement for it, what it's worth. And I'm going to take that money and just go buy another used putt-putt car. Are you done playing? No. Anyway, I'm going to buy a little putt-putt car for Dad to go to and from work in. And that way, oh, we won't have a bill. We won't have another bank note. I don't have to go get another bank note. So I'm good with that. And the best part is, is the insurance man will deal with the other rude gentleman that uh, got irate. The Highway Patrol, when um, they were loading RJ and dealing with RJ, he had time to stop. And I told him, I said, you need to be aware that that man was super aggressive with my son. I said, he didn't even let me off the phone because he was scared of that man. And he says, I can guarantee you, if, if your son had been any bigger, that man wouldn't have done that. And I said, well, that's not the point. He goes, no, it's not. He said, if I could have found a reason to take him in, I would have. He says there wasn't a police officer or EMS or fire department here that hadn't already had dealings with that guy, and they said he was not a nice man. So. Nickel worth five cents. How many nickels does it take to make a dollar? Twenty. He's counting change. Do the math, man. Can't think, can you? Anyway, so it all turned out amazing. Um, we're super, super excited. Just all the glory to God, all the grace by the grace of God. Um, and he's fine. You can tell he's back to his old self. And were you even sore the next day, son? No. After all of that, were you even sore? I had a headache. He had a headache. He had a headache in the hospital. And they gave him some ibuprofen, and then the next day he had a little bit of a headache still. But other than that, yeah, I was ready to rock and roll. 
nothing. Um, your hand was hurting too. He was holding his hand like this whenever I got there. Um, and it, nothing, 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 nothing showed, nothing broke, nothing, anything. Huh? And we're good. So good we're happy new. with that. Good as new. I just wish, you know, that it, I had to sew his mouth shut or something for just a few days. You weren't wishing you would want me to talk. Really. I know. The thing is, I really, truly was wanting him to talk. And he was talking so slow. And his eyes were, like, glazed over. And he was, his eyes were fluttering when he would talk. Like, every time he had to think, his eyes would flutter. And they said that that was a sign that he was drunk or had head injury. They said that's the only reason that their eyes do that. So, we were really, really scared. But... Good scare does the heart good, right? Get your blood yeah. pumping, right? He's yep. counting change. Uh, but anyway, I think that is all we have for the farmhouse. That has really taken up between that and the hay. There hasn't been much time for anything else. Um, so, on the porch. What have I been working 20. on in my spare time, son? What can I do? That's 20 now, Mom. You got to okay. tight 50. What did I do in my spare time? You made that yucky stuff. It's Ugh. not yucky stuff. I've been playing with things from the garden. And this uh, is, it didn't set up. It does better when it's cold. But it didn't set up. And I know what I did wrong. She so messed it up. I did. But this is strawberry, uh, pineapple, zucchini, jam. And it is scrum diddly umptious. I don't even know if that's a word, but oh, it's awful. It, no, it's not. It's amazing. It's it tastes off awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I can't say enough. Don't let her fool you. It's um, a trick. Because I screwed it up and I know what I did that it didn't thicken up. Um Moose, that's a nap. Leave the pig alone. Um It's a trick. So what this turned into is this is syrup now for um, ice cream. The Boys and Girls Club are having some a little ice cream party with the money that they make growing things in the community garden. And they didn't make a whole lot this year. So um, they were going to have enough money just for probably ice cream or something. But now I gave them four jars of this. I also gave one to the manager of the market. She liked it. Her husband liked it. Her son wouldn't even try it. So yeah, I made that. And I'm going to make another batch. I already picked up um, the zucchini. I don't have enough zucchini out of my thing. I don't know why one of the plants started dying, so I don't have. And it was the one that was giving me like two and three zucchini, so. Um, it was all used up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I've been playing in the canning, and I've been using this little book right here. Now, no. this this right here came from a, a farm friend, a friend of the farm. I don't personally know them, but they follow us on the farm. Very wonderful lady. Um, she went to her mom to get hers. Her mom makes this. And so, yeah, she's going to have to bring some by so we can compare. And that way, if it tastes the same, we're good. But anyway, so she did this one. But I've been using this book. What do you want? You don't have any penny rolls. You don't have enough pennies to make a roll. So then it doesn't matter. But just in case you do get enough okay. pennies. Okay, we'll finish. Oh, yeah. Back to your regularly scheduled program, folks. So I've been using this right here, reading and, and, um, I know, it's like a 1970-something. It was my grandma's. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. It was my grandma's, and she made amazing stuff. So you can see the pages are old, um, and it's called Wonderful Ways to yeah, Preserve. It's it, it was oh, a whole dollar ninety-five. Plug us in so we can be connected. So anyway, I've been using this one right here, and... It has, now I have to ask this, guys, because in this book right here, I think it's in this book. Maybe it was in the other one. She's old. She's pretty old. Pickled watermelon rinds. I want your thoughts, and I want them in the comments below. Yes, no. Um, I have a friend who's actually tasted them and said, she said it tastes just like pickles. Mm -hmm. So, yuck. we'll see. Um, let us know what you think, because I really am thinking that I might make some. Now, the other book that I've been, the other thing that I was doing is I was working on pickles. Um, we had the big yellow um, 
pickles. And so I tried my hand for the first time at pickling some slices. And some of the dragon egg cucumbers I made wedges out of. So we haven't opened these because they said to let it sit for like seven days. I guess you got to let them pickle. Pickle, yeah. So anyway, the other thing that I've been using is this book right here. The Ball Book Guide to Preserving. And I guess this is kind of the Bible of canning. Now, somehow along the way, hold that. Somehow along the way, I have ended up with two. So, since God did us a favor, we're going to do somebody else a favor. To enter to win this book, and I will ship it out to you. I will, free of charge. I mean, these come from the Ball Canning Company. Um, and they're like the, the Blue Book Guide. It's got recipes. It's got all the um, guidelines. Everything, learning canning, everything in it. Um, it's got, let's see here. It's got a few extra little things like this right here, step-by-step -step veggies. So if you're a beginning canner, I would love to hear your story um, on how you're getting beginning. And this would be wonderful for you. Although um, the recipes and stuff in there are just as good for people who are experienced. Um, so anyway, I somehow have come up with two. So I'm going to pay one forward to you. And we will ship that out. Now, in order to get it, what do... They have to do. What do they have to tell us? Um, they have to go find a live chupacabra. No, they don't. Um, in the comment, this is only on YouTube. We're not doing Facebook and Pinterest and putting it out there everywhere, and it's not going to be on the blog. This is just for YouTube. So share they with have all to your YouTube. Tell us they have to exactly. share it. Exactly. Right? They're going to have to share it with somebody. I don't care if you tell someone, post it to their thing. Tell another channel, hey, you guys, you know, the Prepper channel, send them over to get this book. I mean, it's got all kinds of stuff in it. Um, we'll probably let Willow Creek know and Dirt Patch Heaven that we're doing a giveaway. Um, that kind of stuff because this is an amazing little book. Uh, but anyway, you have to tell us your, your canning story. How's that? Um, why you're canning uh, kind of thing. I don't know. Just tell us, did you learn from your grandma? You're not, you haven't ever learned. You're just learning. Never done it before, but I want to start. Um, have no clue what canning is. Uh, anything like that. And the truth is, is if you put in there, I don't have, I don't can, but you know, my sister-in-law does, and I want to give her this book. That's fine. Just comment below and tell us your canning story. Okay. So, and that would interview in the other one. Now, the other one I want to bring to your attention, and a friend of mine did this to me, uh, to, for me, to me, <laughs> for me, is she went to the USDA Department, United States Department of Agriculture website, and she found a basic information thing, and she put it together in this little notebook for me because she knows I'm starting, and she knows that I don't know what I'm doing. But she printed out all of their um, guidelines and like it makes a little book and so she said it's available on the web page through the USDA um, I will see if I can find this online I will put a link to it um, in the description box below but this USDA one even addresses altitude it addresses addressed is the addresses all kinds of things. The principle of home canning, um, home canning, selecting, preparing, and canning fruits and vegetables. It gives you charts on how hot to do this. Selecting and preparing vegetables. Wow. I mean, there's a table of contents. And, and then it goes on to je jellies and pectin. And there is um, a whole, um, I'll show you the, uh, index here and this is there's a number of topics when I'm flipping through and then it gets to this so this is just a table of contents 
and this is all about canning by USDA guidelines. Um, it's a good starting point for somebody who's never done it before. The spotlight. So, anyway, um, if anybody's interested in the the recipe for this, I have permission to give that out. So, um, we might paste it someplace and give credit where credit is due. Uh, the pickles just came from that one book, so we're good. But anyway, all right, are we about done? It's 35 minutes of babbling. You all can see that he's fine. And, uh, right, and we're going to do that ball giveaway. So it is the ball blue book guide to canning. So if you want a copy of that, please let us know your canning story below. And we will get you entered in that. What day are we going to do it? We're going to announce it next week. Next Next podcast. Next podcast. All right. One week it's open for entries. So get your entries in before we video next week. Might be Friday. Might be Saturday. Might be Sunday. No, we always do it on Saturday or Sunday. You dork. Friday is meet the animals. Come to get okay, early. so we will see you next time. And y'all, God bless and stay safe.